Hey, what's up guys? Mario back again with another trade video. Today I'm going to go over two trades. Uh, I did end up shorting Airbnb stock and also uh, Zoom stock, uh, both on a second day continuation of uh, last week's move. Uh, last week, if you watched my prior video, uh, I'll post it in the top. I did short both Airbnb stock as well as Zoom stock on a first red day. Today, because of the low flow and the, because there's a lot of room still to kind of go down, uh, I did see an opportunity for a second day continuation move on a low hanging fruit short. Uh, low hanging fruit because it's an easy trade, a uh, simple trade. Uh, so today I'm gonna kind of cover those details, uh, where I shorted, why. Uh, there are some nuances on these trades uh, that I wanna talk about because a lot of it has to do with, with my systematic approach to trading. Uh, because sometimes things don't all, not always work the way you want it to work in trading and that's what makes it difficult and I want to talk about those things in this video today. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel down below. Ask me questions guys on YouTube comments down below. I'll answer all your questions. Uh, again, let me share my screen and let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look first of all at the Airbnb uh, daily chart. So this is like a one year chart is actually less than one year because Airbnb went public on December 10th and this is the first day of trading. So there's, it has been trending um, as you guys know um, and it has been creating this, this long-term trend. Uh, but like any stock that especially IPO or any stock, when, once it has huge moves in the long, in the trend, there's an opportunity to kind of pull back. Uh, and that was pretty much Airbnb. Uh, see this uh, one, two, three, four, five days in a row, it had a pullback. Actually, I had one, two, three, four days at a pullback. But now we had one, two, three, and we had a huge red day on Friday. I did end up shorting it, did make, make some money on that. And today I was looking for a second day continuation move of that pullback. Uh, and, I, that's, and I did end up trading that. Uh, and again, my target area is around uh, 163. I did see uh, this level in the daily um, coincides with the uh, nine, nine, moving, nine exponential moving average that there was a target that it could go up to that level. So um, pretty much what I was looking for. Um, and, I, and here, as you guys can see, this was a, the, the trade that I make actually on Friday. I actually, actually ended up buying it on the uh, S2 bounce, uh, pivot bounce. Uh, but today I wanted to continue that that kind of that downtrend. My initial short always is at the midpoint. Um, that is based on my systematic approach, based on my statistics, based on the back test information that done. It always works. Um, and uh, and today I it was a little tricky. I'm not gonna lie. And the reason why is because of where the price was uh, opening. You know there was a little gap up on Airbnb stock today in the morning pre-market. And usually you do not want to kind of get in when there's a gap up. You don't want to get in when um, when it's too close to the level you want to get in uh, pre-market because sometimes you can have this huge squeezes in the morning, a huge pop, um, and it could squeeze you out. So it's a little tricky, you know, uh, to kind of not follow your process, uh, especially if, uh, you know, if, 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 uh, if it's already – pre-market is already trading around the level you want to get in. So I did find it a little tricky. Um, my other thing that I was thinking, I was thinking that uh, maybe I could kind of short here 175 line. That was a very, very important line here uh, in yes, yesterday's price action. Um, again, this is all based, be, based between the uh, midpoint and the uh, R1 uh, area to kind of short into. The other thing that I could have done and I should have done, I think was a smarter move, in my opinion. And that's something I'm gonna start doing next time I find myself in a similar situation because it's tricky guys. It's very, very tricky because you don't wanna get squeezed out. Like for example, um, I didn't wanna you know, short here at the midpoint uh, at the open and all of a sudden it spikes up and all of a sudden I'm down like <laughs> X amount of money because it spiked right away at the open, which stocks tend to do that. Stocks will spike if given the opportunity. Uh, so I, I wasn't really sure how to portray that. Um, but I think the way that I should have done it, and that's something I'm going to add into my systematic approaches, I should have looked at the next uh, important line, which was 77, 177.50. Um, 
Uh, let me let me kind of add that line. 177.50. Uh, hold on, give me a second, guys. And the reason why is because this level is in between uh, the R1 and the pivot. So if we were to get a huge spike, I think this would have been another area that, that it could have uh, it could have uh, held some uh, resistance. And again, it's based on these levels, uh, these little candles right here. Um, I think it would have made kind of sense. And again, I still have the opportunity to short at R1 if I had to, but at least I would have been able to get in at the R, excuse me, at the midpoint level without so much worrying about like, oh man, um, I, I, you know, I don't want to miss it or whether the case may be or, um, or, or missing or chasing stuff like that. Because, because I didn't, because I was afraid of getting squeezed down at the morning. Um, you know, I didn't get in at the midpoint, which again is, it is my systematic approach. So what I ended up doing is waiting to kind of see the first five minutes to see what the stock was going to do. Uh, we did get a rejection in the midpoint the first try and also a rejection in the midpoint the second try. So once it broke uh, below uh, the, you know, this uh, 172 area, I decided to finally short. So I did short here, uh, again, using the similar risk measurements that I, it, it, that I would have used if I would have got in at the midpoint. So I shorted here at uh, 170, 170, 171.70 is around the area. And I let it trend down to my target, again, based on the uh, pivot level area. So I, even though I did make a win trade on this, again, this is usually not what I want to trade. And this is what makes trading so difficult is that because even though your system says that, yes, this wins uh, eight or nine times out of 10, sometimes certain situations make it uh, where, hey, maybe that's the, the one time or the two out of 10 times it doesn't work. So do I wanna you know, put my order at that level and get squeezed out and be down a couple hundred bucks? You know? So that is the tricky part, guys. That is a tricky part again, guys. That is very, very tricky. Uh, so trading, again, is not a perfect science. It is an art. Um, a lot of it has to do with controlling your emotions and, and following your systematic approach. But sometimes, again, those two out of 10 times where the trade doesn't work or three out of 10 times the trade doesn't work, that's when you kind of have to think like, wait a minute, should I kind of not follow my process this time and kind of see how it's going to change or may change the other time? Uh, and that is a tricky part about training, guys. That is a very, very tricky part of trading. Uh, interesting thing is that my process worked. If I would have just had the, the trade to get in at the midpoint, it would have worked regardless. Um, but I think one of the things that I want to start adding is, that, hey, what if I do get in at the midpoint, but I get squeezed out? Like, how can I better manage my risk? You know, if I do get squeezed out so I can kind of get in at other levels to kind of add to my position, um, on a front side type of move, but again, where I'm not so sized in that I could, you know, lose big. So more, more like a small percentage size in maybe like a 30%, you know, position in and then another 30 percent here or another 10% or whatever. So if the case it does squeeze out, I don't get, you know, lose big on a short or lose more than I should. Uh, but overall I still make a, a pretty decent win. So I was happy with that. Similar situation that happened with Airbnb happened with Zoom. Um, and then looking at Zoom stock, uh, again, I did short this on, on Friday. Again, I shorted on, on a bounce to a, a very important level, 400 of resistance. And also you had the 50-day uh, moving average. So again, it sold out. It, it filled the gap. And I was looking for a second-day continuation uh, for another red down move. Uh, where I felt that I could probably, you know, touch the eight, 380s, even not even below like 370 or something like that. Uh, now my trade did end up working, but again, I was I found myself in the same situation that I found myself in, um, in what do you call it, um, uh, Airbnb stock, where again it was already trading above the midpoint. Uh, so the next level that I was thinking it was 395. I was thinking, okay, you know. I think this, this is already trading above midpoint. So I definitely don't want to get in there. Um, and I want to get in now 395 for my first entry, but then price never got that to that level. One interesting thing that I did notice is that pre-market, 
there was this line right here at 392 uh, that when the price did get to the level, it rejected it once and twice. So that's something that you have to keep in mind, with, especially low-hanging fruit trades or even trades in general, pre-market levels are so important because that's where the algos get in. That's where the institutional investors or algos get in. And that's usually what tend to hold. So it's so important to look at pre-market levels. So I ended up doing something similar to, um, to Airbnb, um, you know, stock the way that I traded it, where I, I wanted to kind of see if, uh, if these levels were going to reject or eventually get to 395. We didn't get to 395. Eventually it kind of sold below the, the midpoint. And I think I should have gotten in at the midpoint or close to the midpoint here after this big sell off right here. Uh, because I think, um, you know, I would have been, I already had a better average, but once it's had the second leg down, I was like, okay, I think this move is going to work. And that's where it shorted. So I kind of did short a couple dollars, you know, uh, above my, uh, the midpoint where I wanted to trade. Um, so in a way you could say, I kind of did chase, you know, which is, not what I wanted to do again. That's not my, my intention, but you know, how, how it opened up is the reason why I did what I did. So this is where the nuance is. And this is where, why the reason why trading sometimes is difficult because even though it would have actually worked, uh, uh, you know, I would have, there was a possibility that I could have gotten squeezed out to 395 and higher. But again, same reasons why I shorted here is because same reasons I noticed at Airbnb stock. Now it did uh, uh, did break out above the mid, uh, volume weighted average price. The only mistake that I made here, besides I can not have it not shorting closer to the midpoint, was not stopping out right away after a uh, broke above the uh, the uh, volume weighted average price. Uh, you know I could have gotten squeezed out pretty bad here. It, it did again rejected the 392 level again, which is really nice. Uh, I ended up closing near 392, so that was a mistake here. I should have kind of waited after the rejection, but again, I, I guess I was just kind of scared that it could have continued to trend and hold the, the volume weight with its price continuing to trend, so I kind of wanted to get out on any little pullback or whatever. Uh, so that was the only mistake I made there. Uh, so I did take a loss on this one. Again, this shouldn't have happened. If I would have just had my order at midpoint, regardless of where the pre-market level was, I've actually would have been in a better place and I probably would have hold and added here at 395 and that would have happened. So it did sell off again. And you know, when I saw this sell off break below value money rush price, I was like, you know what? I think there's still an opportunity if I were to short here at midpoint again and let it trend out to the, to my target, I think I could still make up this loss and make some money. So that's pretty much what happened. Eventually, I mean, I, actually, this was a lucky move. I was lucky that it hit the midpoint because if I, it wouldn't hit the midpoint, I was not going to treat it again because I didn't want to chase already, especially after a loss. And I wanted to kind of follow my process again. You know, when things like this happen, guys, you have to take a breather and really kind of focus and be like, okay, guys, let's follow the process. What, what, my, what does my process says? What systematically says it works? And my process systematically says that when I short on the midpoint, uh, and a low hanging fruit uh, short, my target should be able to hit. Uh, and that's literally what happened. Um, so my process was correct again. And, and again, this is where you have to trust your process, you know, uh, regardless of where the market opens, I guess, because, you know, regardless of where it open, you know, I it still had my target if I would have just hit the, the midpoint. So that's kind of the interesting part about, you know, going over your data and doing the, uh, they, what do you call it a back testing so i did short again here i got actually a, a price a little bit above the midpoint which is kind of nice allowed me to get out sooner so i ended up trending and, and you know falling down and selling off and then it finally hit uh, my target here and i was able to take this red into a green and i did make some money above my my level but again if i would have just shorted the midpoint i would have even a way bigger uh win and i wouldn't have to worry about taking this loss so Go figure, guys. Again, you know, uh, following your process again, guys. Your systematic process is so important. And again, just proving this, you know, how the prices re reacted, you know, even regardless, even at the price action, I guess you could say, you know, I guess what really matters is the levels, you know, and regardless of the price action, the levels really what matters. And again, 
the reason why I shorted in a second day continuation on both on, uh, on Airbnb stock and Zoom is because the short flow is, is very low. There's not a lot of short sellers stuck on ZM or Airbnb. There are actually more long stock, long, uh, long uh, traders stuck in trade. So if it's pulling back, a lot of these traders are going to be like, you know what, let me sell my profits. They could take it out. And, and again, uh, uh, long traders or, or, or buyers of a stock are the natural sellers of a stock. So those prices tend to pull back because it's people who bought, you know, maybe days ago or weeks ago are taking the profits and they're selling into those moves to take the profits. All right, guys, I hope this video made sense. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button. Again, ask questions down below on the YouTube comments. I'll answer all your questions. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. You guys will hear me hear from me back soon. Have a good one, guys. Take care.